Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I have finally come back to do some filming because unfortunately the last couple weekends I have just been really busy trying to fill in job applications and when I basically it was the evening before I had time to do any colouring and then I was like you know what I just want to sit and chill on my bed <laughs> and obviously coloured the picture that I happened to be colouring at the time but it's half term and I thought Yes, I still have a few job applications to do, but I was just like, I'm going to make time to film because I really want to make some videos for you guys and I you know I miss making videos. It's, you know, fun thing to do. So I thought that we would do this picture from uh, Romantic Country, The First Tale. It's from the first one, in case you don't know. Um, and I thought I'd do this picture with just set in this house because I thought as I've been driving around and it's coming towards the end of spring, beginning of summer now, I've been seeing lots of beautiful wisteria around walls and buildings and I just thought, you know what, this is, looks like the perfect tree slash non-tree because it could have not had a tree on it but this picture just happened to have a tree on it um in which i could add my own wisteria so i thought well why not um so with this picture i am going to use my derwent ink tints and uh, i do have the graphite tints as well i've got the graphite tint here so i might use some of those as well in with the ink tints um i may use some color pencils as well I just thought for the time being I'd use the ink tents. Um I was thinking if I was thinking of doing this um part of the building here quite a light colour, so maybe kind of like a white colour, because then I could put the wisteria on it. And the good thing about obviously the ink tents is that if I did do this a really light colour, say, obviously once it's dry, that's it, you can't reactivate it. So then I could put it on top and then it wouldn't like mix and bleed together. So I was just like, oh that's so cool. Um it might be that we might use I might end up maybe if I feel I need to get a couple of my Albert Durer's out, but I think I'm gonna just try and use ink tents for this wherever possible. Um, I just also have a quick thing to say. Um, is basically I've had a few people like I guess since I've had the channel started, which is over a year now, uh, just not very many, but like a couple here and there that say sometimes they can't hear me. And um, one, I am sorry that for one, you can't hear me, but um, I just want you to know that um, obviously I am sorry if you can't hear me in my videos. I do, I think my first ever video I did, I did realize it was a bit quieter. So I know there's like one or two where um, I'm perhaps not close enough to uh, my phone because that's what I'm using. So of course I've only got the whatever it, where, the microphone wherever that is picking up my voice um i do normally naturally quite naturally speak quite loud actually <laughs> um which might may may or may not come across on the camera i'd have no idea um but if i'm with friends then you know <laughs> that i speak quite loud um my friends will definitely be able to tell you that and also my family too so um but it might be that uh, perhaps i tone myself down when i video i don't know um but i do play my videos back and i mean i hear them perfectly fine with volume full whack as well like i i hear it pretty loud so um obviously i'm once again sorry if you can't hear it but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that um I have got my phone right next to my face so it should pick up um me talking um so the only thing I can suggest to those people that can't hear very well there is a subtitle option on YouTube and I have tried it on my videos um just a moment ago and it seemed to work okay so um if you really are struggling to hear me which I know it's not a lot of people but if you are I'd suggest that option because unfortunately there is no way I can't make myself any louder if I could have would but sadly I cannot so it's just to help uh, any of those that are um you know perhaps finding me a bit hard to hear which I think majority of people will find me okay to hear but obviously it's just a couple here and there that I hear say that they can't hear me which you know obviously I don't want them to not be able to hear me so you know I'd like everyone to be able to so hopefully that might um help a little bit and also explain to you why I may not always sound the loudest because there's not you know, it's not like I've got a boom microphone thing. Like, I don't know, um, there might be a couple of channels that have that. I think most people don't know. I think they just use the camera and either maybe my phone microphone isn't the best. I don't know. Either way, moving on. So, um, where to begin is the first question because I haven't a clue. Um, 
now I know that the tiles and the brickwork is going to take a long time so um, obviously parts of this vid I, video I may indeed speed up for you um, but as the brickwork potentially could take a ridiculously long time it might be depending it might not if I feel like it's going to take a couple of hours I might you know show you as much like show you quite a good chunk of it say including some speeded up bits and then just do a tiny bit of it off off camera but I'm going to try and pretty much do everything on camera with you anyway and obviously talk about how I'm doing it so um I don't know I might start with these little flower pots down here just because they don't seem quite so daunting and I kind of already feel like I want to do them in like a blue colour or at least one of them I'm just going to move the camera slightly so that we can see I may need to move my book up a little bit actually hold on let's move if I move this over the lamp there there we go and I can zoom in a little bit that's better oh okay I almost sent the um Derwent uh graphitant flying off the desk then so if I also move the camera this way or no maybe I should move it this way aha here we go so I'm just trying to move it so that um one I don't have the book half hanging off the desk and two you can obviously see it I also really feel like doing the picture on the other side as well this one I feel like this is a really cute picture and I would like to do it, so I might do that sometime soon, actually. Um, it was quite funny because the other day I realised, uh, well, not the other day, it was quite, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that I had um, done the same, exact same amount number of pictures in all three of my romantic country books, but now this first book and I think maybe the third tell, I've done one or two more than, than the other one now. So I'll have to eventually make them all equal again at some point. Okay, so I have got my swatch book here of all my ink tents, uh, pencils, which I realise I am super zoomed in so you can't see all of it, um, but I have them all. Um, there's just one or two colours I don't have, like I don't have sepia ink, I don't have Chinese ink, I don't have, oh no I do have antique white, I just didn't have sepia ink and ch uh, Chinese ink because I just figured I didn't need a million different blacks. I probably will get them one day. So um, initially I just had the 36 set and then my local art shop um, where I live sells them separately so I just went and brought the rest separately over a period of months and years so you know. And then I've got the Derwent Graphitint here. So as you see they're a little bit different. These ones you can reactivate so actually I'd have to be careful where, I mean to be fair I wouldn't really use any of these where I'm going to put the Mysteria anyway. Oh, let's not move that out please. Right, so I think I feel like doing this like a blue colour. Um, I don't know why, but I seem to really like dark ceramic blue like um, flower pots. I just really do. So um, I think I'm going to just do the whole thing. Like I'm not going to bother. Well, although actually I might do the pattern, but what I might do is leave this white, this bit white. And then have these little triangles in blue, have this bit in blue, and then maybe just do the whole of this bit in blue. <laughs> rather than fuss around with it and then I might do the same here where I have it um, white here, this bit blue, the bottom bit stuff blue and then that bit the same just so it's got, so it's kind of like a white and blue but I kind of want to do it like a deep blue colour so I'm thinking so I'm just showing you the palette um, so we would like a bit of contrast so I don't know whether to use like a dark grey to add a bit of depth in there so maybe the neutral grey might be good to just add a tiny bit of depth with the blue um right I put them I'm putting my graphic tint on top of my stickles that would be the easiest thing uh oh no the grey is it down here here we go yeah. just got the grey out so there we go there's the neutral grey that's the one thing I do wish the Derwent Intense had like a lighter grey because their greys are very dark um and mind you i suppose you could just put it on lighter you know like really lightly and then it would turn out lighter so obviously the harder you, the you push the pencil the more pigment you get um so i think i'll use that one i'm trying to figure out which blue because i kind of want it i kind of feel like i want it more like the lagoon the goon la, la, lagoon blue oh my word i could not say that properly for a second and then i also quite like the peacock as well was it like you know kind of like the delft blue kind of ceramic colors like i really kind of want to make it look like that and i think i feel like these are kind of delfty kind of sort of colors i mean even the violet doesn't look too bad actually 
I think the violet would fit in with that quite nicely. So I might use those. Two, or do I use the violet and then the peacock blue? Hmm, I might do that. We'll use the violet and the peacock blue just so that it gives it a little bit of a slight differentiation. Oh my god, I cannot say that word. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping because I'll see, I feel like these two colours are very similar. In fact, and I feel like in some way these are slightly different. So hopefully it will give us a slightly different look and not just blend all into one colour. Because that happens sometimes. So we'll, um, we'll give it a try and see how it works. No worries if it just blurs together. We'll just go with it. <laughs> so let me move that out of the way. So well, the first colour we'll start with is a neutral grey. Okay. Which is 2120. Um, so we'll just start with this little flower pot here. So... Um, I'll put a little bit under hit well at the top of the rim and then I also have to figure out what colour I want to do the flowers as well which I'm not sure yet I'm also not sure what colour I want to do the bricks I think I might do them a kind of a grey colour maybe with a hint of like I've got like an amber colour in this um, which is kind of like a um, like an ochre brown like a re more of an like yellowy colour, but it's got a hint of brown in there. Um, obviously, like a kind of a bit like amber, like the stone, but not quite amber. Um, so I might use that with some of the grey. So I might use some of the graphite tint to do some of the brickwork. Um, so yeah, I might do it kind of like a grey brown. I think possibly. So I'm doing it a little bit dark just around the room, just because I want that to be um, a bit darker to show the shadow. Um, so hopefully when we add the paint, it will look fine. <laughs> add water, it will look all good. Um, that's a problem sometimes with ink tents. Until you add the water, you don't actually really know how it's going to look. Either it's going to look alright, or maybe not. But most of the time it looks fine. So um, I have done a picture a long time ago. I, don't, I think it was in the second tail. I think I mostly used my Albert Dura watercolour pencils, but I did use some ink tents in that, and I really liked how that one turned out, actually. So, um, the new problem I find with the Romantic Country books is that, unfortunately, it doesn't take a lot of water very, very well. It will bleed through, um, so you have to be quite controlled with the amount of water that you use. And I feel like, I feel like the texture of the paper in this book is slightly different to the other ones as well, um... Because I don't know, I've used water in this one and I feel like it's taken the water in this book okay, but then in the other books it hasn't. So, I mean, I don't know, it might be that they've got slightly different paper, who knows. So um, I'm just going to add it again a little bit down here. So I don't know who this, what this duck is, because that's Joe set over with a bow over by the front of the house. I'm not sure um, who this one is, I'll see her little friend. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but it's a, it's a duck. So, just going to pop a bit down here. So I do tend to go uh, with a slight kind of hardish pressure. I want it to be darker and then I do do a lighter pressure where you obviously I want to mix it in with the other colour. A little bit now. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to make it all, instead of... Yeah, and so I was thinking, I don't know whether to do each little panel section by section um, as a little thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it all as if it's one big thing rather than it be slight, slight in different, um, I don't know, so say these could be slightly raised and they would create a bit of shadow in the middle. I'm not going to do that. They're just all like painted on, shall we say. Let's do that. Be easier. Okay, so that's the grey. Um, so we'll use the violet next. So this is the violet. So 0800 for the violet. Okay. Um, yeah, they seem to kind of have like a, a bluey, purpley colour. Like a violet blue almost, rather than an actual violet on the um, on my swatch. So, yeah, might as well use that. Because I think that's what Delft blue is. It's kind of like a purpley blue, I think. I mean, mind you... I'm no, I'm no expert on what colours are in certain things, but I feel like it's kind of like a purpley blue, like or more on the blue side than on the purple side, but it's got like a hint of purple in there, and um, I really like that that colour. Is it because like I've got a Delft blue um, polychromos, and that's kind of more on the purpley side, so it might depend like on 
obviously different manufacturers make it slightly differently. It's like, oh, like, well, actually, to be fair, most ultramarine blues I come across tend to be the same, um, roughly. So, we'll just do this a little bit. I will do these triangles in a minute. Um, I just thought I probably wouldn't use the grey in the triangles. I'd probably just use the violet and the peacock. So, um, we'll do those in just a second. There probably won't be much, like difference and look for these because they're, they're so small I mean, there's not much you can really do to show any sort of shading specifically in these little bits but we'll get these bits done here so um yeah we'll do these flower pots and then um, hopefully we can I'll show you something else to do I don't know what bit we should maybe we'll do the front door but then I'm not really sure what color I want the roof and stuff to be I have to have a think whilst I'm like doing this with you guys what colour do I want to do the rock work and and the the tiles so I'm not sure if I want like it to be terracotta tiles at the top or, or if I want to do them like a grey like a slate sort of grey colour so I'm trying to think about what colours the door could be to sort of kind of match but I don't know I kind of feel like I want to do a blue door so maybe I'll just do a blue door regardless. Because, I mean, I'm on the walls, I think I'm going to have them, like, white. I'll have, like, some light greys in there. So I'll probably use some of the graphic tint greys just to add some shadowing and, and stuff on them. But um, I think I'm pretty much going to have them mostly white. Um, so I feel like a blue door would kind of work quite nicely. Like, it would stand out quite a bit. So I might um, do that. And I might... I don't know whether... I'm, I feel like, shall I have a hint of like turquoise green and then maybe a hint of yellow in there I just feel like with sometimes with the ink tense pencils like you can experiment a bit more with them like just randomly mix a couple of different random colors and see how it goes because I've put pink in um brickwork before with them and it turned out quite nice actually so here's a peacock blue which is 0820 so yeah just it just kind of depend I think so we're just going to use this bit now. Now I have, this probably will come out quite highly pigmented because I haven't, um, I haven't been pressing hard or anything because these are quite, but you will get quite a lot of pigment out of them if you, you know, don't press super hard anyway. Um, so these will look quite dark, the pots. So if you wanted it to be slightly lighter, you would just literally just do it very lightly like that where you, so you can kind of see it but not see it massively. And actually, if you're not sure with the ink tense, it is better to actually go a bit lighter anyway because then if you found it was too light you could always go over it once it's dry go back over it with the colour pencil and make it a bit darker whereas I can't really do that with what I'm doing right now um it's gonna basically just be dark regardless of how it's gonna turn out <laughs> but oh well it will be fine so we're almost got time <gasps> Yay, now we can add the water and see how it will turn out. So I've got my um, my pa kitchen paper towel. As you can see, I've already used it for a lot of other projects. It's, I'm going to use that. And I will use probably the water brush that I always use, which is my... I tend to always use this one, the Caran Dash like, water brush thing. I tend to always use it when I, um, I'm using... Um, Ugh, ink tents. I think it's because ink tents tend to stain the tips of your paint brushes, and I feel like I don't really. This is already stained, so it doesn't really matter if it's continuously stained. Now, I think it's already got water on it, so we should be able to just go with it. So sometimes I find I have to dip these um, in to a water pot to, because like I don't get loads of a lot of. I don't know. It's like sometimes I'll push the little thing to get a bit more water out, and I don't really get much water out of it which is kind of annoying. Um, I've ordered some Arteza ones actually, just to try those and see what they're like. Um, so I should get them hopefully in a few days time and we will see what that's gonna be like. And we're also getting the Arteza watercolor um, paints, the set of 60, the tube ones. So I've been reading, cause I've been reading the Throne of Glass um, book which I think I mentioned in the last video that I had. I got it from my library and I've got the colouring book. Um, so I was hoping to do... Um, I So it's got the book, the colouring book has got like the prequel uh, book series pictures in it. So there's a couple from like, there's like these little assassin 
books that are prequels to the actual Throne of Glass story, which is the main character's like profession as an assassin before she gets captured. Um, so, I mean, I'm not 100% sure if I'm definitely going to ever read those, just because they don't really... Like, I'm not really interested in necessarily that that character's, like, past in that way. Like, I don't mind learning about it in the actual book, but I'm not sure if I, you know, want to read an actual separate spin-off book on, on it. I'm not saying I won't ever, but I just, mm, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I might not. Um, so... I thought with those watercolors when I get them I would do a page in that book because I'm gonna be it's gonna be like my Game of Thrones one where I just use watercolor in it I think not necessarily all the time but most of the time right so um I think that's turned out okay it is quite bright so I think on the next one I might not press as hard so it'll be a little bit lighter but you know it still looks all right and I actually quite like the colors that I chose so not bad so you can see like with the grey it does make it a bit darker so it means you've got a bit of shadow there but it I think again I might have to press a bit lighter because it looks very very dark in quite a few places um I will probably add a little bit of shadowing or something on the white maybe with a bit of blue so like with a light blue so, but we'll do that in a minute so we'll just do this one over here so this time I'll go a bit lighter with the rim at the top so actually this is quite, this is a good exercise to show you the differences between pressing harder, pressing lighter. And you can see the difference. Now I guess this could be, mm, this could just be like a stone colour flower pot. So I'm not sure if I want to do this not blue and just do it like a stony colour instead. I might do, I might do that. I might leave this bit for the minute. And same with that one and just have it like, so this is like a stand and the flower pot's like on top of it. Because I don't know, I don't know if I feel like I want that to be the kind of bluey colour. I feel like I maybe I want it to be a bit different, so I might make it that way. So now I've got the violet again and I will go over the grey with it. But I'm not, I'm not pressing as hard as I was on the other one, so I'm pressing lighter on the, on this now. And it doesn't really matter if there's more of the purple than there is the the violet even than the the peacock blue on the smaller bits because obviously it's a little bit um higher up there so we'll just do this bit down here right and i'll add the peacock blue in now And we'll just do that bit there as well. Okay. Right, we will do these little um berry things. I don't know what they are. Circles on the on the pot in a minute. We'll just um we'll just do this and see how this one turns out. Oh, so I think this looks better actually. Yeah, this is better. So it's not quite as um not quite as dark. I feel like the colours, they still look nice and rich, actually. So can you see the difference? Like, obviously, this is really, really dark. And there's nothing wrong with it being that dark. But it's just, I feel like this looks a little bit better because you can kind of see a bit more the contrast between the colours. Um, so there you go. <laughs> that shows you, like, if you... And if you did want it that dark, again, you can just go over it. So it just kind of shows actually it is better to maybe have a slightly lighter touch to things. Because I, I do find that something occasionally I do do with Intense like I did there. I will press a bit too hard and then I'm like, oh, that's a lot darker than I would want it to be. And obviously now, now that's dry, I can't reactivate it and there's no way I can make that lighter. So um, I would recommend doing what I just did with this one, which is do it with a light hand and then it won't be so bright so we'll just do these little circly things and then we'll do the other flower pot um and yeah then we'll do the door i think we'll do the door um and i don't know what else we'll see what time because again i don't want the video to be super long how long okay this is basically 24 minutes already <laughs> hopefully though because we're using ink tents it won't take that long so when i do do the door 
it won't take that long so it might be that what we'll end up doing is this these flower pots for today and the door and maybe the windows as well because I think I'll have the window panes match the door um, and then in the next video I might do the brickwork yeah I think I'll probably do the, the tiles and the brickwork together might be a good idea so I think what I'll do is I'll show you how I'm going to do some of the tiles because then I can have a better think as to what colour I want them to be um, I mean as I say because of the building itself is going to be white the blue will look fine with that and in fact the blue would probably go with um, terracotta tiles it'll go fine with grey tiles um, and it's just really double checking the colour of the stone work I'd like to do because um, I don't want to be sat here for like ages trying to think <laughs> of what kind of I want to do it. And then you'd be like, hmm, I'm getting bored now. So let's just do this bit here. I may have pressed a little bit harder than I anticipated with this with these little things here. I'm trying to go a bit lighter now with the um, peacock blue. There we go. And then we shall just add a bit of water in that. So also that's another thing I forgot to say, always start with the light where the lightest section is first. So um, obviously I'm going to go, because the lightest colour I had here was the peacock blue, I'm going to start in the peacock blue area and then I'm going to work my way up to the violet. And if you're worried that once you've gone to the dark colour, if you're going to get the dark colour into the light colour, then always wipe your brush off before you re-go well, before you go into the light area again because you might end up dragging some of that dark colour into the light colour. So that is my tip for you and that is with any watercolour medium that you would choose to use, not just for ink tents, for any medium, <laughs> make sure you do that. So um, we'll do this bit, so it will just be like this bit here, that will be blue and again we'll leave that white so it kind of matches. Because um, I, I just I feel like I want my flower pots to match. I know some people might have slightly different colour colour ones, so they might go with um, you know three different colours that go together nicely, or they might um, I don't know do two different colours regardless doesn't matter. I just thought I just, I kind of want them to match so. Because the person that lives in this house, they would feel like that's that's what they would like. I've decided <laughs> they would want that. So let's just do this. So again, I'm not pressing too hard on this at all. Um, I'm pulling out the paper that's underneath it. So we'll just do this. And then we'll just add a little bit to the white just to kind of give it a little bit of... Um, no, I don't know, maybe maybe a bit of blue for the shadowing, perhaps, we'll see. There we go. Okay, so that is that done. So I've got, what can I use, maybe should I use a bit of the iris blue for a bit of shadow on it or maybe a bit of dark blue, or oh, sorry deep blue, maybe make it a bit more bright, there's bright blue as well, I think deep blue might look better, hmm decisions decisions. I just want to add like a tiny bit just to suggest there's like I'll see a little bit of shadowing on the white I just feel like the blue would look better than if I used a grey because that's the thing with white you don't always have to use like a grey you could use blue or you could use purple especially like with things like snow I think blue and purple work quite well together actually and the same with like clouds and things so um, I'm trying to you know trying to be a bit more a bit more adventurous I might use a bit of deep blue but I think what I will do is I might just take it off, so take it off from the tip here. Um, what we'll do is we'll do it on this little one down here. There 
slightly bigger because we don't we don't want like it to be very bright because actually if I put a lot of that on there it could be quite bright it's just like to add a tiny bit of shadow and I might put like a tiny bit underneath the rim um so I thought I'd try it on this little bit here first because if it doesn't look great we've only got one flower pot slightly ruined and <laughs> not all three of them um because you can always eat, you know cut that out so we'll just do a tiny bit here so it is I am having it so it's quite watered down because I don't want it I've got cat fur on it oh that's Tilly her fur gets everywhere all the time <laughs> Like, I feel like the amount of stuff I use to try and get it off, it's just, it doesn't really get rid of it, <laughs> basically, I feel. So, there we go. See, that looks alright. So, I'm just dabbing it very slightly, because I only want, I only want a tiny bit of pigment. I don't, I don't want a lot of pigment. I don't want to pick up a lot. And then I am sort of, like, trying to get it off, so then I can just blend it with pure water to kind of make it sort of like like you know so it doesn't have a harsh edge on it if you get me so that looks quite nice all right there so and that's the thing if you do find you've picked up too much pigment very quickly just get a ton of water and you can water it down you have to be quick because obviously if it dries uh with the ink tents then you know you're in a world of trouble um if you're using watercolor though um then it wouldn't be so bad because obviously you can just re-wet it but again um you do have to be a bit careful because this obviously isn't watercolour paper. If you try to lift it too much, you can obviously peel your paper. Um, so you do have to be a bit careful. But there we go. So we've got a tiny bit of like shadowing type thing on the white. So it doesn't, you know, it's white. But, you know, it's not like amazing shadowing by by the way. But it's just, just something there. Just a little bit. <laughs> to give it a little bit of a textury sort of thing. Um, now, what kind of should we do the bases? I feel like they would just kind of be white, so in that case, I will probably just use a little bit of the grey. Shall I just use the neutral grey or should I use charcoal grey? Hmm, or paint grey. I've got three different greys I could choose from. Oh, um, I think I might use the charcoal grey. So again, I'm just going to lift a little bit off the pencil, um, and we'll just, right. So it's probably going to look like it's more grey than it is, uh, than it is white, but it's only because I don't really want, um, Oh no, <laughs> I accidentally re decided to get more colour off it and I didn't want any. There we go. I do have a hard time trying to, when I have white things, trying to make them still look white and shadowed at the same time. Some people, I don't know how they do it, they are so good. So that is something I'm still kind of working on, trying to make it so it it is looking white and not just grey, but um, I feel like that looks alright like that, that's fine. I might, see that's the thing with these as well, you could always go in with a little bit of pencil on top as well to just, you know, if you want to add a tiny little bit more depth to it, if you wanted to add a little bit more shadow, because you just got a bit more control with a pencil than you do if you do it with intents this way, so that might be something I might do. Let's just add that a little bit, um, so we're only going to have like a tiny little bit on this anyway because it's off the page so we'll just add a tiny bit there so there we go we did the flower pots woohoo so yay to the first thing I mean obviously we've got to do the flowers in them but we'll do that another day because I'm not really sure what colour I want the flowers to be so let me put my pencils back the deep blue where does the deep blue go Next iron blue. Look for iris, there you go. Is that one? And violet is there. And then peacock blue. Oh no, hold on, that one goes there. And this one goes there. There we go. 
so I like to try and keep my pencils in, in the order that they are in on the swatch book because then when I want to go find them it's easier to know because I'm like oh it's next to this colour otherwise I've got forever me looking at them so yeah this looks quite good and um, if you just see here it it hasn't gone through because I didn't use tons and tons of water on that so um and as I say I think this paper is just slightly better than than the other one so I'm just going to drag this over now so we got the door the door and the in the frame so we will do the door and I'm thinking of doing it blue as well um we won't have it the same sort of blue that we've just did the flower pot so I think we will do a slightly different blue because um you know why not why not just do it a bit different so um i may keep the gray though that we've got i'll keep the neutral gray because we'll use that for a bit of shadowing but i will probably go a lot lighter with it just so it's not so um in your face and iron blue looks quite nice with how because we could use that for a tiny bit of shadowing as well maybe or do i just use the iron blue for shadowing and not the gray So I'm kind of thinking that the dark aquamarine is kind of like a bluey, a bluey green looks quite nice because I kind of feel like I want it to be like a blue green door in some ways. So actually maybe we'll do that. So it's kind of not really necessarily going to be a blue blue door. So let's get the iron, iron blue, where is the iron blue? Is it that one? Yeah, here we go, iron blue. Who knew that the colour of iron could be blue? <laughs> um, um, I do wonder actually, is, is there some iron, the metal iron, is there some that is blue or is it just from something else, I have no idea. <laughs> um, then the dark aquamarine I think looks quite nice, the dark aquamarine, could have that there. Um, we do have green aquamarine or I could use mallow green, so sometimes I do find I don't like to use colours too similar to each other, so if I show you like um, here, so this dark aquamarine and green aquamarine are very similar, so I kind of feel like, you know, sometimes if you want to get a bit of contrast difference, it's better to, um, say, use a really dark colour, you could use a middly colour, and then like quite a really light one, so they're, they're three clear different shades, whereas if you use some that are very close together, they tend to just blend together and look the same, <laughs> and then you don't really get so much colour difference, which is kind of annoying when you want it to, you know, look different. Um, so I'm debating about whether, I mean, I still might use some of the green aquamarine and then could still put the mallard green in there, it's just a bit lighter, so I might do that actually. So we will use the green aquamarine, but we just, it'll only be like used a tiny little bit, so it's not really gonna be very prominent. And then we'll use mallard green for the light. So we are kind of going for like a greeny sort of um, blue door. So we'll use the iron blue. If I feel like I need to add in the grey, what I'll do is I'll add in the grey afterwards. So we'll start with, when it's dry, so we'll start with iron blue first. Because then if it's not dark enough, then so that's another thing about Inktense. You can add it in afterwards if you feel like, oh, it's not dark enough. I can do this. Um, so let me see. We will have this bit, I think. I'm just thinking with the windows, but I want that it ought to be the same colour because I want the window frames to be the same colour. I might just do this bit rather than it be stone, although would it be stone? Hmm. Yeah, because I guess it would be different, wouldn't it? Hmm. Okay, well if we just do this bit first and then I can change my mind afterwards. I could decide I want all of it the same colour. Possibly, but um I don't really know. I might do this bigger bit here so we've got a bit more space so we can sort of see it. So like I said, I'm not going to go too hard and heavy with the blue because um, if we need to, we can always just either add a bit of grey or go over it with the, the darker blue again just to add a little bit more contrast. So I'm just thinking like it might be slightly darker down some of the panels more than the others. So... Maybe the ones on, so I'm going to say up here is probably going to be a bit darker, isn't it? Because at the top, and we've got this bit that would block a bit of the light. One day I'll get really good at having, figuring out the source of light. Because sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'll have the source of light up here. And then I'm like, oh no, I'll have it down here. So I kind of change, tend to change my mind 
as to where like oh there's like multiple light sources all in one place um because that's the thing i've got these like candle things here so is this meant to be at night time because I'm, I'm gonna have those not night time maybe that these people are the type of people to just leave their lights on which they shouldn't do i mean that could look like a light bulb to be fair so i might just i'm gonna have it that it's not on um but these clearly are candles so well, I had to have a word with the owners of this house and be like, Oi, where's daylight? Turn your lights off. That's one thing that annoys me sometimes is sometimes I'm driving and I, and it's the daytime, like middle of the day, and a few of the street lights are still on. And I'm like, you're wasting electricity. Turn them off. <laughs> Most of the time they are off. It's just the occasional time, I don't know, maybe whoever, who, whoever is responsible for turning the lamps on and off clearly has forgotten a few and just left them on or maybe it's a fault or something and they just because maybe they automatically are on timer and turn off and then the timer for that one's broken i really have no idea because uh i don't have no don't know maybe i should google this and find out and see who is it that turns on the street lights is it automated or is it somebody that physically is at a switchboard and it's like I gotta turn them on now I'm going to say it's probably automated because they tend to just all come on at the same time. Um, probably. Anywho, I'm getting quite happy with the fact that it's getting lighter and lighter in the evening. So we've got longer evenings ahead, which I like because I just prefer the summer daylight hours. And it's really funny because I was shopping in town um, a week or so ago and... I haven't been in, in the city centre of my town f for, towards the end of the shopping day, which, because all the shops tend to close at six um, on a Saturday, and I haven't been really in the city centre around that time for a very long time, or, or when I have been, I'm normally on holiday, and obviously when you're on holiday and you go to big cities, a lot of shops are open till like eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. So there's me, it's, a, it's almost six o'clock, and I was like, oh yeah, I've just finished having dinner with my friend, I'll, I'll just pop into a few shops as so I'm on my way home. And then I realised, oh no, they're all shutting. I was like, oh no. I was, I've gotten so used to the fact that when I am around out in the evening, <laughs> I'm so used to the shops being out open late. Obviously, if I was to go shopping quite a lot more towards the evening time in my own country, then then I would be quite used to them closing early. But I've just like forgotten. It was just quite amusing. I just forgot that all the shops closed early. And I was like, oh yeah which you know part of me would love shops to be open till quite late all the time I really would but I do feel for the people that work in the shops having used to be somebody that worked in retail myself I hated it when we would sometimes open up I think around the Christmas time we would have our shop open till eight and it probably wouldn't have been so bad if it was a shop that would be busy in the Christmas period but people don't really need to buy shoes as Christmas presents really a couple of people might buy slippers but most people don't really buy shoes as christmas presents for people so i kind of felt like the shop uh, that i worked in was a bit pointless being open till eight o'clock at night because we hardly got anybody come in whereas you know actual places where people would get quite a lot of gifts for people like the department stores or i don't know just anywhere where you think a lot of people would go shopping to buy gifts for people I think it makes sense those ones are open till quite late, but I just kind of felt like ours, they didn't need to be. <laughs> so I do kind of, you know, I used to hate like having to work like until eight o'clock on those days because I was just like, I want to just be home in the evening. So mind you, I suppose quite a few people that work in the restaurant business, they, they're used to working evenings quite a lot. I just think for me, I would, that's, that's the thing though, like I would... I'm one of those people that would prefer to start work later, so like say start work at like 11, 10 or 11 o'clock, but obviously if you did that then you probably would have to work a bit later, so it would make sense. But at the same time I prefer to have the evenings in. <laughs> but most work, luckily, they you all have to start at 9, generally speaking, so then you do finish around 5, which isn't so bad. Unless, of course, you've got to spend an hour or two getting home, then you still wouldn't get home till quite late, which does suck. Anywho. Um, so, oh yes, just really quick. So, um, yesterday I saw, oh no, was it yesterday, Saturday? 
because it's Monday today, yeah, Saturday. Um, I briefly saw a doctor about my knee. So basically, he decided, because of the activities and stuff I do, if this is going on the last video, if you watched last video, I talked about my knee and my knee injury quite a lot. So, you know, if you feel inclined to watch that to find out the story, feel free. Um, I will not repeat it again, because those of you that have heard it might have thought, oh, I don't want to hear about here again so basically um this was just like a follow-up thing to talk to a surgeon about my options and he said because the activities i do so i do ballet and the fact that um i'm quite young and i want to keep being fit and active he was like yeah definitely when you're older you're probably going to have problems you're probably won't have any cartilage left from continuously doing ballet on it and also I probably will get arthritis in my knee because I don't have a lot of stuff there <laughs> and it, my joints are rubbing together basically um, so he said that I should basically have the operation so I'm kind of petrified about it I've got to meet another doctor the actual surgeon that would do it so I've got to meet them first and then they'll tell me a bit more about the procedure how long is, but I basically found out that I won't be able to drive for six weeks. I mean, I will be able to, I can walk and stuff on it. I think it's just in case I have to brake quite hard, then obviously that would be pressure on the knee, which wouldn't be good. So that's the reason why, but it just means that basically my mum and my dad are going to drive me around for six weeks, which is quite funny. Um, but I'm hoping that I can have it done in the school holidays because it means I it won't matter because I wouldn't technically, I don't work in school holidays anyway, so. Um, which he seemed to think that I would potentially be able to have done because I know there's waiting lists for those things so I don't know if it might be you have to have it whenever it's free but maybe if they can arrange it to do it in the summer holidays that would be best because then I don't have to take any time off from anything which is good right so we will use the dark aquamarine um, now so again I'm gonna make sure I'm not pressing too hard with this so the problem with this door is we're not going to see an awful lot of colour <laughs> different colours um, in the smaller sections so we might not have say the mallard green in some of these sections here because you're not going to be able to see it so in this big section here you'll be able to see a bit of the mallard green to be honest I only want a little bit of the mallard green in it anyway so um, it's mostly going to be these aquamarine colours I'm kind of intrigued to see what my door's going to look like now I hope it turns out good I hope I like it because um Apart from maybe putting some white acrylic paint and then going over the top with pencil, there's not much I can do to fix it. So, yeah, I think that's the thing. If you're not sure with some um, colour combos, if your ink tents, like, you're not sure if you're thinking it will turn out well, because you're like, oh, will it look good? I would suggest getting a separate piece of paper and trying the colour combos on there and I'm really sorry I just not the camera um because that way then if it doesn't look that great then you've only done it on the piece of paper you haven't done it in your book because as I say once the water's on this and it's dry it's permanent and there's nothing you can do to change it <laughs> um so yeah oh yeah just one so um one other thing is that's happening to me at the moment is my mum has bought a new house so and we got the keys the other day so potentially I will be moving stuff there over the next few weeks so hopefully I can still do some videos um I personally because she was gonna she so she's managed to ask the internet people who, who we're gonna have the internet with you know to get sorted but they said oh it could take up to two weeks to get sorted which you know I think is a standard for most companies but I was I was like I was like mum yeah I can't really move in until we definitely have the internet as in like I don't mind living somewhere with no internet for a day but for two weeks no <laughs> um everything I watch is online <laughs> and I don't have sufficient data to what use my phone data either by the way um and I can download some stuff on my iPad, sure, but like I wouldn't be able to download two weeks worth of Netflix, say. And also quite a lot of stuff I watch is on YouTube anyway, so um and then can you imagine the mountain of things I'd have to catch up on would be insane. Um so I just decided I know and it's really sad as well that basically I could not live without the internet in my house. Um this is only in my house. If I go on holiday I'm totally fine without having the internet for two weeks because I'm on holiday and I'm doing things and you know I'm experiencing life in the world but when you're sort of like mostly around home you get home from work and you're like oh I just want to sit and chill and watch something 
yeah um i mean i oh, sure i could keep myself occupied i could still color which is fine um it's just i quite like to watch youtube whilst i'm coloring so i would i just don't know i just don't think i could survive two weeks <laughs> without it so i'm just like yeah i'm like yeah sorry mum. i've got to have this first and then then I can come. But to be honest, I think we've got a lot of other things to sort out in the house anyway. So it'll probably be a, a good week or two before we could get stuff in anyway. Because we've got to clean it. And then get a few bits and bobs it's sorted in the house and all that first anyway. So this is green aquamarine. So yes, sadly, Tilly will be staying where I am currently. Um, so I will miss her. I mean, of course, I can go back and visit my dad and see her all the time. So it's not like a problem. But obviously I'll miss her because I like her having her around sat on my bed. Um... Um, well, I'm also a little bit sad as well because basically the my bedroom I have now is quite a big one and for many, many years I lived in a shoebox of a room and my sister finally moved out and I finally got the bigger room so I'm really happy because basically all my stuff fits in here. The new house, my bedroom is absolutely tiny. I mean, it's still a decent sized room. Like, it's not like you can fit a double bed in there but I'm struggling to fit a lot of the other stuff in like basically it's unfortunately because of how the window is and how the radiator is that takes up wall space if they were not so big taking up the wall space or they were put in a different part of the room i could still fit a few things in without it covering the radiator or being in the way of the window um but because of those things it means i actually have got less space to work with um so and obviously the house isn't huge either so there's not like a lot of places I can put other stuff anyway so um I really want to have my desk my chest of drawers and my bed in my room so I've taken measurements and I'm going to see if I can you know see if I can play around with the space I've got and see if I can somehow still fit it all in I think if where I'm going to have the desk it's going to have to cover part of the radiator at least it's only a tiny bit though I just obviously won't want it to cover the whole radiator because otherwise I won't ever feel the benefits of the warmth of the radiator because all the heat would get blocked and that would not be good so um yeah we'll have to see but I don't know part of me doesn't really want to go because I actually just like my home that I'm living in it's only because I think my mum would be a bit sad if I didn't like live with her I mean she'd survive but I don't know, I kind of just like my home that I live in now, and part of me is just like, oh, I'd rather stay here, but we're going to stay with Tilly. So this is Mallard Green, um, I'm going to use that now, so again, it'll just be kind of a light touch. And we won't be, you won't really necessarily have this colour come through an awful lot anyway. So, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be all fine anyway, so. It's quite funny, because we're actually going to be quite close to where my sister lives, so, um. We'll be able to do quite a few things with her, I guess, a bit more. Not that we could before, anyway, but, um... Yeah, so we, we'll see. So uh, it might be that I might find it a bit hard to film in those those uh, few weeks as well, because obviously I'll be busy. Because this week I'm busy, like, helping to sort stuff out. So, like, tomorrow we've got to go to the house and clean it. Because we seem to have an infestation of wood lice around the front door. I think it's because it's a, there's a bit of a gap there and it's a bit damp. So, you know, they like damp and they like... If there's a gap that they can go through, of course they're going to go through. So, obviously, when it's dry and stuff, they won't be there. But um, we just got to the dead ones, hoover them up and usher the, the living ones out and see if we can figure out how we can stop them coming. My sister said though that where, because she lives like down the road, that she gets that as well. So I think it's just, because it's a, the property is like from the 1800s, so it's quite old. So obviously, you know, and like a new house where you'd have a lot of stuff preventing that sort of thing ha from happening. You know, I remember when I lived in Canada, actually, we had an ant infestation. I woke up one morning to find a little ant trail going on in my room. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, this, like, exterminator guy, whatever, put some stuff down. And it was really funny because basically it's like, I think it draws, it would draw them out. So I'd have, so they would start at the one end of the room coming out. And they'd be alive and walk, walk in. And by the time they got to the end of the room, they were basically slowly slowly but surely dying and I kind of felt bad for the ants because we do need them but I was just like ants you need to live outside but they uh, they started coming in the kitchen and everything so we had to get loads of like we had this like a uh, poison stuff it's like um a little tin with peanut butter in and holes so it would be like they would you know come to it and 
basically the whole little ant colony would go to it and then like a week later we found them all dead behind the sofa because that's where they were coming from so I kind of felt bad because obviously we don't I don't really like killing things if I can avoid it because you know we need things like that for the part of the world to go around but obviously for hygienic reasons and stuff because we had food and things we can't have them in the house um and I think because it was quite cold in Canada Instead of hibernating in the winter time, they were like, hey, this house is warm, let's, let's come out. It wasn't like in the dead of winter that we had them, but I was just like, you guys should be hibernating in the ground right now. Like, why are you coming out? It's probably because our house was like on top of there where they lived and they were like, yo, this place is warm and there's food. Let's go come here for the winter. So, yeah, that was bad, but... We managed to get rid of them in the end, and I think when it was proper summer, they were like, we should go outside. And I was like, yes, yes, you should. So actually, I quite like how that turned out. I like my door. It looks nice. Um, so yeah, again, I may potentially just add a little bit of shadowing, just a little bit more here, um, just so it's a tiny bit darker. So we'll do that in a minute. But I, I like how the door's turning out. It's a nice colour. I just feel like I wanted to do like a bright kind of summery kind of feel. Because, you know, summer is pretty much here now, although, unfortunately, our weather... Uh, we've had some really nice sunny days, um, but, like, now it's quite sunny outside, but it's not, like, particularly super, super warm. I mean, Saturday was as the only day this year that I felt like I... Oh, actually, no, maybe not. I could wear shorts on Easter Sunday, because it was quite warm on Easter Sunday, actually. Um... But there, I've only had like maybe two times this year I felt like it was hot enough for me to wear shorts. And that's saying something. So um, mind you, we are only just starting to go into summer. So um, it isn't like unusual for us to have this sort of weather. But we have had quite a lot more. But the colder weather seems to have lingered around a lot more than it normally does. So um, I'm looking forward to have some slightly more warmer weather. Um, I really did quite enjoy the weather we had last year, however, it was very bad for the grass, so actually, as much as I would like it to be that warm again, because we've pretty much had no rain for a whole month, I kind of don't want it to, you know, I think it would be nice for a few days of the week to be like that, and have a few slightly cooler ones, and then a day of rain or two, just so that, um, you know, the, the environment can kind of, like, heal from the weather, but, you know, with global warming, that probably isn't going to happen, sadly... <laughs> But hopefully it will, maybe this year, cooperate a little bit more, we'll see. So, pretty much we've got this door done. Yes. Oh, doesn't that look nice? I like that. So the only problem is I've got to try and figure out what colour to do this bit round. <laughs> Part of me kind of feels like I wouldn't mind doing it gold, you know. I do feel like that would look quite nice. So with these window frames at the top would this bar be considered part of it or would it just be the other bit so let me move this down oh you can't really see it um i might have to zoom out a little bit hold on if i move this back sorry guys um it's fortunately yeah i can't super zoom in in the window because i can't get the camera to be like so i'm thinking i want to do the frame here the same as the door, but I'm not sure. I'm going to say this bar bit here would definitely be a window seal. That would be, say, like a stone colour. But I don't know about the top bit. If the top bit should be the same. Like, uh, maybe I will just do that. Because otherwise I think it would look a bit weird if that was stone. But then I don't know. Would I, I could have both of those bits stone. I mean, it wouldn't look un really weird. I can have these three bits here of the window pane blue. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Well, we'll start off with that bit anyway. So, uh, basically I'm just going to do the window. I think I might just do this one. And then we'll either, I'll just have to do the other two. Because of how where they are, they're not easy for me to swish. And this is basically almost an hour long as well now. So I might just do this window thing. And then in the next, either off camera if you don't mind, I'll do the other two. Or on, on camera in the next video, I'll do the other two. We'll, we'll decide. Oh, well, I'll decide because it's me that's doing it. I might just, um, first of all, just add a little bit more iron blue to this bit of the 
door. I just feel like this bit would be a little bit darker. So we'll just add a little bit more. A little bit more there. And then we'll move on. Do, 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 do. And then I'm sure I'll have to start getting my dinner ready because um, I found in the supermarket the other week that they did beef brisket. Now I've only had beef brisket once. I had it kind of like in a burger bun sort of thing. It was really good. It's like pulled pork but pulled beef. It was so nice. Um, it's really funny because I always see like this like brisket thing. Like I think in the Big Bang Theory they mentioned it quite a lot. And then uh, we had like an American Grill like food place which sadly we don't have anymore and I'm really sad because they did like the best burgers and I'm just really really sad the company's gone bust as well um I think it it didn't go bust where I was living I think the landlord just didn't like it and was just like no you can't be here and then they went bust um afterwards and so I'm very sad because I really really like their food and they were as comparable so I'm very sad <laughs> but hey these things happened didn't they so um yeah, so basically I've had the beef brisket once, so I thought as the supermarket had it, I'll give it a try and I'll have it home. But I'm going to put it in a wrap, because so I've got those like um, fajita wrap things, the old El Paso, like we have like the, we get tend to get the kit, and I have like loads of the wraps from there, so I thought, well, I'll just stick it in one of those wraps. There we go. I feel like this bit didn't activate, so well there so I'm just gonna there we go right so that's just added a tiny bit more depth so we'll just get the iron blue again so we can do the window um oh I really like this I kind of feel like maybe maybe this could be like you know like those Mediterranean islands sometimes they have like white buildings don't they with like blue like Santorini only this isn't Santorini because we'll see it's definitely not Greek looking um <laughs> nor is that santorini blue um one day i may go there because it looks quite nice um so yeah but it kind of it kind of gives me a holiday vibes this house a little bit so maybe in cocot this is like a place this could be a part where some people like to go on holiday so i want the aquamarine yeah dark aquamarine here we go i found it <laughs> So we'll just put a bit here and then we'll use the green, green aquamarine, where is it this one? So we won't be able to um, obviously add too much of the mallard green because obviously this is quite a narrow space so um, I will add a little bit in but we, like I said we're not really going to see the mallard green really so I'll just lightly pop it over. Okay, and let's activate it. And I'll just see what it looks like without having that top bit done. Because, I mean, I don't know, I kind of feel like the top, the top bar would look better. If it was the same colour. Yeah... I don't think it's going to matter if the top, I'm going to make the top bar be part of it as well. I just feel like it would look better if it was, so I'm going to make it that it is going to be, it's not going to be stone, <laughs> it will just be part of it. So we've got the iron blue again, so I won't need to use too much of this, so we'll just use a tiny bit. Um, dark aquamarine. So I would have done this one, but because it juts out, I kind of feel like that's clearly not part of the actual window frame. It's just it's just like the the window seal sill that would be underneath. So we'll use it as that bit instead. Do do do. Okay, and then the last bit of mallard green, and then we are good to go. Okay. There 
there we go awesome so that is that sorted i'll just wash my brush off so i don't have any excess ink so i will do the same i feel like you don't really need me to sort of show you the how i'm going to do the other two so um and then i've also got this one down here oh i've just realized i've got these two here hmm well i think they will have to be because i've just done that one that color so they will match and then i'll have to figure out what colors to do the curtains so that the curtains kind of go with it a little bit um so there we go i have done all oh, i should zoom out and then we can see the whole thing so there we go so we did the lovely beautiful flower pots which i really like even though that one's a bit darker i still think it looks fine but obviously it looks better like that and then we've got our amazing door i love the color of it and then the window panes because you know who doesn't want matching window panes and a matching door and now but now i'm thinking maybe <laughs> maybe i should have done those like a terracotta -y colour or brownie colour and that they didn't need to match the door. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> if if you are following along and you wish to change that to a different colour, feel free. And <laughs> don't feel what like you have to copy me. But it will certainly it'll be a statement house, let's just say. Let's let's just go with it. The the guy the person that lives here could be a man or a woman or could be both. Um they they like this colour and they felt, well, let's make all everything match. Just why not? So um we'll just go with it for now. So um thank you for watching and I will see you soon for another part of this video. And also I will have my completed pictures for May video as well this week, so you will get another one anyway. So I hope everyone's having a good I think it's uh a bank holiday in America as well, and uh, maybe some other countries. So, oh sorry, I was yawning then, because I'm a bit tired. So I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon. Bye!